Hello everyone, this is Jozef Nagy here and welcome back to the second part of the tutorial where I'm talking about discretization. In the first part I start talking about discretization and I set up the five cases that we will use. The only thing that I will have to change is the actual scheme that I want to use. Let's just jump in. I will start with opt-in scheme. I will change it here in FV schemes. What you have to do is delete the scheme and enter Gauss and then upwind and save. I did the mesh and I set up the initial conditions. I use a diffusivity of zero and I set up the control dict. Now I just change the discretization scheme of our divergence term. So this term, I set it to upwind, which is a first order. And now I can just start the simulation with scalar transport foam. Okay, simulation finished. I open up Paraview with the dummy file. And what will happen? Uh, I set a velocity of 1 in the positive x direction. And this means that our scalar should be transported from the center to the right hand side. Let's take a look. We're starting between 0 and 1. And indeed, our scalar moves to the right hand side. But you see that the numerical smearing is rather high and if I really rescale the data we still have a minimum value of zero but we do not have a maximum value of one anymore the maximum value is at 0 0.959 that's not very good so the smearing is very high for these time steps and for this calculation grid so what can you do let's take a look at a different discretization scheme for example, the linear, I will just change this here to Gauss linear, start the simulation and open up the results, linear, apply and then translate it in the negative y direction so we can see something. Okay, same initial conditions between 0 and 1. And now you see that with the linear scheme, which is a second order scheme, the smearing is not as strong as with the first order scheme upwind. But if I zoom in here on linear scheme, we do have, we do maintain the maximum value of 1, but we have negative values with a negative value of 0 0.0141. So we have an error of at least 1.4% in the negative direction here in the scale at least. Now let's just take a look. I will zoom in. The minimum is 0 point, minus, minus 0 0.01 and plus 0 0.01. No. 0 now we have it rescale and you can see the problem now here we have oscillations so let's just go back to 0 so in the middle we have 1 and here we have 0 and you see that these numerical oscillations are traveling to the left hand side and this is bad because if I zoom in what's actually happening is If you have oscillating values, if I blend in the grid, you have a low value, then a high value, a low value, a high value, a low value, and again a high value. So you have oscillations between single cells. And this is typical for the linear scheme, for the, for, for the central differencing scheme. And if these reach the boundaries, then, for example, a zero gradient boundary condition creates 
a reflection of these values. And this is the reason why I set the boundary condition for the sides here and here to be inlet outlet because I want to avoid these reflections. But I will come to that a little bit later. So we have these embarrassing oscillations here, which we want to avoid. So I will go for that into the linear upwind case and the case for the pits daily tutorial for scalar transport form came with the linear affin discretization scheme and the syntax goes like this that you still have this gauss like we had gauss upwind or gauss linear you still have gauss linear upwind this tells open form to take the linear upwind scheme but then you have an additional term here grad t and this defines the discretization of this gradient here because here you use a gradient and in earlier versions of open form you would say here gauss linear for example so this defined the scheme for the divergence term and then this defined the scheme for the gradient within the linear upwind scheme so take gauss linear but in the, the version 2.3 and in um, some versions before you define grad t and this tells open form to take the gradient scheme that we defined for t here in the grad schemes and we did not specify anything here for t but we use a default value this means that open form will take for all gradient schemes the linear scheme so this is how you do it this is the syntax save it and now start the simulation and open it up here linear upwind apply go back t between 0 and 1 and we have to translate it good so this is the linear upwind case and what do we see here that the smearing is not as bad as here it's the mount is the same as here but if i zoom in to our embarrassment interval here we do not have the oscillations anymore which is good we wanted to get rid of them Okay, so let's just go to a different discretization scheme, for example, quick. You just type here quick with capital letters, start a simulation, and open up this case. Translate it. Same initial conditions, and now you see that here the amount of smearing is comparable to linear and linear upwind. But for example, instead of having a negative value as a minimum, in the case of the linear upwind scheme, we have much much smaller value which you could just set to zero and for the quick scheme we have actually zero so these two are comparable but at first let me just show you again the embarrassment interval with the numerical oscillations and here for quick we do not have these oscillations so this is good so we here we have a high numerical diffusion and here we have these numerical oscillations which are bad but these two are more or less comparable well, let's just go to the last case change the discretization to cubic 
which is fourth order scheme. Open it up. Translate it, of course. And want to show you the initial values, same initial conditions. And what's happening? That our scalar is still transported to the right hand side. And the numerical smearing is of the same order as in these three cases. But if I show you the embarrassment interval, we go back. Ah, you see that here we also have these numerical oscillations. And they are even faster. And as I mentioned before, I'm using inlet outlet. But if I change this value here, I go down and use instead of inlet outlet, which again, here it's a zero gradient boundary condition because our velocity is pointing in the positive x direction. So the velocity is going out of our domain, but here the velocity is coming into the domain. So here it is a fixed value and fixed value of zero. For a reason, you see, if I set zero gradient on both sides, so also here, now it's zero gradient here and here, and if I save it, delete the results, run the simulation, and refresh now, let's go back. What's happening? We still have the oscillations, but now, you see that they are reflected and the amount is even higher. Now, if I go back and scale it to between 0 and 1, let's take a look. And now you see that we have something here, a blob. Because those um, oscillations were reflected on the boundary and now we have this embarrassing value, which we do not want to have and it has a value of more or less 0 0.5. Now, I don't say don't use the cubic discretization scheme, but what I say is that it is important to know that there can be issues on the boundary. So you have to take care of the correct boundary condition. Additionally to the time stepping, the mesh refinement and the discretization scheme. So you have to take care of that. To recap now, in the first case, with the first order scheme, with upwind, we had a high amount of smearing. With linear, the amount of smearing was smaller, but we had our embarrassing oscillations. We had the same amount of smearing here with the linear upwind without the oscillations. Same was true for the quick. And here with the cubic, we have the same amount of smearing, but we have these issues with the numerical oscillations. So these two are the best for this case. One additional thing that I want to mention, if I go to discretization, linear upwind, and I delete the results here, and I set the delta t to 0 0.01, which gives a Corot number, a CFL number of one, I can still run the simulation, so now I increase the time step. If I reload, the only thing that's happening that is that the amount of smearing is now a little bit higher, but the simulation is running. If I would do the same with the quick, I delete it and I change the delta t to 0 0.01 and I would just start now the simulation, then the simulation crashes. This is an issue with quick. You cannot use the same time step as you would use for linear upwind. 
And indeed, in my experience, linear upwind is the best compromise between stability, runtime and accuracy for, let's just say, 90% of the simulations. If you need a high order scheme, then take it but and use it. But you have to know that you could have issues on the boundary. So you have to take care of the boundary of your time stepping and your grid. And for that, again, go into the user guide and read through the numerical schemes here and choose the scheme that you need. You can also use TVD schemes, fancy schemes. You have to decide. Good. So with this, I would like to conclude the second part of this tutorial and co conclude the entire tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and I really hope that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.